Louise Rinso presents Big Town, starring Edward G. Robinson with Ona Munson. Good evening, folks. This is Ken Niles. We are happy to announce that this broadcast is being made available to our armed forces based overseas. You know, an old proverb uh, that I just thought of says, if you want a whiter wash, well done, just leave it to Rinso. And how true that is. Why those quick-acting Rinso suds are tough as nails on dirt and grime, yet safe for washable colors. And with Rinso, you can hustle through a load of clothes with as little as a five-minute run in your washer. How's that for saving your clothes and easing up on your trusty machine? That washer's got to last for the duration, you know. And if I were you, I'd have it checked right now by a reliable dealer. And I'd certainly get the new anti-sneeze Rinso tomorrow. And now, Big Town. The makers of Rinso bring you the star of Big Town, Edward G. Robinson, as Steve Wilson, managing editor of the Illustrated Press, with Ona Munson as Lorelei Kilborn, girl reporter. Until recently, Steve and Lorelei have always been on the receiving end of the news in Big Town. Now we find them where news is being made, in war-torn Europe, grabbing headlines hot from the fire in Lisbon, Portugal. But before we join Steve and Lorelei, let's stop for a minute in Big Town America and find out what's going on there. Get your illustrated press here. B.C. agrees to dismantle warships in Martinique. Read Steve Wilson's sensational dispatch from Lisbon. Transatlantic operator, Big Town calling Lisbon. This is Lisbon. The Illustrated Press calling Mr. Steve Wilson. Lisbon is ready. All right, Lisbon, just a second. I have Mr. Wilson for you, Mr. Fletcher. Oh, uh, that's swell, McNally. Boy, it'll be good to hear the boss's voice again. Can I listen in, Fletcher? Uh, sure, Hoagie. Grab that other phone. Oh, swell. Hello, are you there, Steve? Uh, sure, sir. You don't have to shout like that, Fletcher. <laughs> just like talking to Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Uh, well, here's what I called about. Uh, we've been getting some mysterious letters from Paris, all addressed to you. Well, how can that be? No mail is reaching the United States from Paris. Well, these letters are smuggled out and mailed in London. Oh, they're full of dynamite, Steve. Red-hot news about the underground revolt in occupied France. Mm. We've been running them in the Illustrated Press in circulations up 20,000 a day. Well, who wrote the letters? Well, uh, they're unsigned, but they're written in English. And in every letter, we find a certain phrase repeated over and over again. A phrase I think you'll remember. The words, by the same token. Who does that remind you of? By the same token. Well, Art Mason. Of course. Art Mason used to be our Paris correspondent. You remember how we used to kid him about using that phrase in all his dispatches? Yes, you bet I do. Why, I haven't heard from Art since we got into the war. Not since I burned the cables begging him to leave his beloved Paris and come home. Well, he's using that phrase now to identify himself. He's still there in Paris and still sending. Uh, Steve, do you think you can contact him? Well, no, no, no not, uh, not from Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, Lorelei and I will grab a plane for Vichy today. Uh, maybe Art has an underground connection there, and I'll try to get word to him. Well, swell. Uh, give our love to the gang. So long. Well, goodbye, Steve. Take good care of yourself. Uh, we'll Bye. try to. Goodbye. And now, to Lisbon, to the headquarters of the Nazi secret police. Captain Heinrich? Yeah, Ritter? We have just listened in on an interesting transatlantic telephone conversation between the American Steve Wilson and his newspaper, the Illustrated Press. So? Wilson and Fräulein Kilburn are flying to Vichy today. They will try to contact a man named Mason. Mason? If we could only lay our hands on him. Ritter, I want a complete transcription of Wilson's telephone conversation with America. Yeah, well, excellent. I also want to know the plane on which his reservations have been made. I'll call our headquarters in Paris. They may have some special instructions concerning our American editor. <laughs> from so many countries, so many people going so many places. Well, there's been as big one focal terminal left for what commercial air travel they still have in Europe. Taking off British air terminal, first runway, arriving, Deutsche Lufthansa, second runway. British, hmm. German, and Italian planes side by side on the same field. Yes, and elsewhere they're shooting each other out of the skies. 
things happening here are implausible, illogical, and unbelievable, yet they happen. Are uh, you Monsieur Wilson? Uh, yes. You are leaving for Vichy? That's right. There is a message for you in this envelope, Monsieur. Read it when you get aboard the plane, then destroy it. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, who gave you this? You will know when you read it. Bon voyage, Monsieur. Airways Francais, her on way. Destination Vichy. All passengers aboard. Oh. Here we go, Lorelai. Oh, uh, Stuart, is uh, this the gate for the Vichy plane? Oui, Monsieur. We have so many passengers for this trip to Vichy that two planes are leaving. Your tickets? Here you are. Merci, Monsieur. You have a last-minute reservation. You and Madame are on the second plane. Come, I take you aboard. Oh, my God. It's not. It's funny. It's a There are a lot of passengers for Vichy. Most of them seem to be German. Yes, I noticed that. The vultures all flying in one direction. There must be a fresh carcass to pick. Uh, here, careful of these steps. Go right in, Monsieur, Madame. Your seats are numbers one and three. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Our seats are up here in front, Lorelai. Well, there weren't many extra passengers at that. Except for those three men on the rear seats, we have this plane to ourselves. I'm dying to know what's in that envelope. Uh, so am I. Hmm, uh, get this. If you're interested in art, I advise you stop at Hotel Celestin in Vichy. Others interested in art will contact you. Try to get the picture entitled France Will Rise Again. There's no signature. If you're interested in art, I wonder if that means Art Mason. Of course it does. Try to get the picture. We say in American slang, that would mean try to understand. Well, then, France will rise again. Must be a code. You've hit it, Lorelai. Art Mason must have found out that we're in Lisbon, that we're leaving for Vichy, and he'll try to contact us there. I think we've made the right move. Crazy, that's the Seine. Seine, but that's in Paris. Well, of course it is, and that's just where we're about to land, the Nazi occupied Paris. How could that happen? Well, that business of steering us into another plane was a trick of some sort. The steward who showed us aboard must have been a fake. They put one over on us. Exactly, Heverson, and there's what? nothing you can do about it. Ritter Engel, keep an eye on them. I am Captain Heinrich of the German military police. Yeah, was it you who had this plane routed to Paris? Yeah. But why? We're not spies. We're American citizens, traveling from one neutral country to another. Dangerous citizens who must be put away. While you were in Lisbon, you were hand in hand with British intelligence. Also, we don't like the stories you send your American newspaper. Oh, you mean you don't like the truth? This plane is flying under the insignia of Vichy, France. If you land us in Paris, you'll be violating the laws of neutrality. One violation, more or less, will not matter. You're under arrest for attempting illegal entry into a German military zone. Well, you deliberately reroute our plane and then accuse us of an illegal attempt to get across the border. Well, that's typical Hitler logic. The plane is landing, Herr Wilson. You'd better sit down. My orders were to deliver you alive. Please let me carry them out. Where are you taking us in this car, Captain Henry? First of our headquarters for questioning. You'll enjoy that. Oh, I'm sure we will. What section of Paris are we passing through now? The industrial district. In the factories on both sides of this street, Frenchmen used to make a famous French car. Now they manufacture bombing planes for the Third Reich. But the factories are dark. Don't your slaves work at night? Well, the Nazis work them 14 hours a day, Lorelei. They have to let the poor devils get some sleep or they wouldn't be able to go on. You've talked enough, you two. Keep your mouth shut or we'll shut them for you. Donovan. Engel, pull to the curb. Stop the car. What's that whistle, Steve? Sounds like an air raid alarm. That's just what it is. 
planes overhead now. The British are raiding us again. What, you mean those are British planes in the sky? Yeah. Some of your American planes too, you schweinund. Well, your air raid alarm is a little late in my country. We sound an alert before the final alarm is heard. We have that too, but we also have French saboteurs who cut the wires. They welcome those British dogs. Get out of the car, both of you. We've got to find shelter. If you try any tricks, we'll shoot you down. Keep close to me, Lorelei. This may be our one chance to get away from them. Look out! It's coming! Get down, you fools! I think. Oh, it sounded as if the whole world were crashing around my ears. Oh, it deafened me. I can, I can hardly hear a thing. What happened to our friends, the Nazis? Well, the driver of the car and the guard got their tickets all right. They're lying out there on the street. Oh, and here's Captain Heinrich, laid out as neatly as you please. Is he dead? No, I'm afraid not. No? Unconscious, that's all. Boy, look at those factory buildings burn. Steve, there's some German soldiers coming. Yes, I see them. Don't get excited. Just keep moving. But where on earth can we go? I don't know. Paris is crawling with Nazis. We may get caught any minute. Somehow we've got to find Art Mason. He's our only hope. Ken Niles again. We'll return you to Big Town in just a moment, but first... Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. To get a lily white with ease, be sure to get new rinse, so you'll fly through wash day like a breeze if you get rinse, so... Yes, sirree, the Rinso sisters, Lily White and Annie Sneeze. Well, what's doing, pets? A deep, dark plot. Sensational! We've got the inside dope on a big expose. What? Why, but how? I, well, I, we're plotting to expose those old-fashioned soaps that let your wash get dingy and yellowish. And give you wash day hay fever, too. So we're going to tell the world about new Addie Sneeze Rinso, how it has two special ingredients to prevent yellowing and graying of clothes, and how white things come gleaming snowy white without hard rubbing, scrubbing, or boiling. And say, Rinso's a lifesaver for clothes. Why, with Rinso's fast-acting suds, as little as a 10-minute soaking will do the trick, then a few quick rubs on the extra soil places, and wham! Just look at the gorgeous Rinso wash. Colors fresh and bright, white things dazzling Rinso white. And Rinso's anti-sneeze. You said it, girls. And now, sing it. For Rinso's anti-sneeze, you know, it saves your wash this sorrow. You spell it R-I-N-S-O, get some tomorrow. Please stay tuned in at the end of this program for exciting news about next week's show. And now back to Steve and Lorelei in Paris. We left Steve and Lorelei as they escaped from the scene of a British air raid on military objectives in Paris. Two Americans in desperate need of a hiding place with enemies all around them. Now we find them in a cab being driven through the Paris streets. Well, lucky thing we found a cab driver who didn't suspect my French. <laughs> well, at least he didn't appear to. You know, he's a dear old thing. Did you ever see such a lovely mustache? <laughs> <laughs> Makes him look like a walrus. Oh, sweet old walrus. Are we being followed? No. No, I, I don't see any sign of it. But you never can tell. Oh, my chérie. Mm. We have arrived, monsieur. 422 Rue Washington. All right, driver. Uh, you wait in the cab, Lorelei. This is the house where Art Mason and I used to share a room together. Probably isn't here anymore, but the landlady may know where I can find him. Oh, look, Steve, there's a woman just going into the house. Mm. Uh, Pardonnez-moi, madame. Oh. Uh, oui, monsieur. I am uh, looking for Madame Perron. Uh, would you call her, please? That would be difficult, monsieur. Madame Perron is dead. Dead? Oui. She walked among the refugees who were killed on the highways as they tried to escape from Paris. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to hear that. Well, what about her little son, Pierre? What happened to him? I do not know. Pierre is gone, too. Oh, poor little devil. Well, are any of Madame Perron's old lodgers still living in this house? No. 
German officers live here now. Well, France will rise again, madame. Shh. Be careful where you say those words. Who are you? I'm a friend of France. I'm looking for an old comrade, an American, Arthur Mason. Do you know him? I know of him. He's not here now. Go to the Hotel de Capture on the Boulevard de Strasbourg. Ask the night clerk at the desk. That is all I can tell you. Merci, madame. Hotel de Capture. <laughs> It, Lorelei, the Hotel of the Four Sisters. A votre service, monsieur. Oh, are you the night clerk? Uh, oui, monsieur. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to locate an old friend. I understand he stopped here at one time. Perhaps he left a forwarding address. His name, please? Mason. Mason? His uh, first name? Arthur. Arthur Mason. Uh, many people come here looking for Monsieur Mason. Uh, some of them speak French with a German accent. Well, I'm American. You can see that. Eh? Look, uh, here's my passport. Uh, oui. This lady and I are in trouble, and we've got to find Mason tonight. We don't mean to do him any harm. Quite the contrary. We need his help. Uh, I think I understand. Attention. Yes, sir. Don't look. Uh, continue talking to me. A Gestapo car has just stopped outside this hotel. The men inside it are watching you through the window. Oh, I knew they'd find us. Don't lose your nerve, Laura. Don't lose yours. What are we going to do? Attendez, monsieur. I placed the hotel register before you saw. You sign your name as if you were going to become a guest here. Uh, you understand? Yes, I get you. We've got to make them think they had us in a trap. Oui. Uh, what happens next? Now, I pretend to show you to the corridor which leads to your rooms. Uh, uh, follow me, please. We're right with you. If we only had some luggage, it might look real. But instead, I show you to this door which opens to the back alley. I will get word to Mason. Good. Uh, you tell him Steve Wilson is here. Tell him to meet us at Mimi's. At Mimi's, oui. Uh, bonsoir, monsieur, madame. Bonsoir. bonsoir. God bless you. Come on, Lorelei. Oh, that was a narrow shave. Uh, we're not out of it yet. Yeah, watch your step. It's as black as the ace of spades in this alley. <laughs> What's the matter? Hmm? Well, there's something lying here on the ground. I think it's the body of a man. I nearly fell over him. Oh, wait a minute until I strike a match. Don't light a match. <gasps> Hey, Scott. Who are you? The driver of your cab, monsieur. The man lying on the ground is an agent of the Gestapo. He was waiting here for you. He will wait no more. What did you do to him? Does it matter? One Nazi less to bleed France. My cab is waiting at the end of the alley. Hurry. Well, why should you risk your life to help us? The Gestapo wants you. That is enough for me. Are you English spies? No, no, no. We're, we're Americans. We're hunting for another American. A good friend, Art Mason. We've got to find him tonight. Here's my cab. Get in quick. You should have told me you wanted Monsieur Mason. Well, how could we know you were to be trusted? The little people of France are still to be trusted, Monsieur. They are still fighting for liberty. I believe that, driver. Take us to the park, the Bois de Boulogne. But you told the clerk you'd meet Mason at Mimi's. I know. That's where she is, in the Bois de Boulogne. like a park at all. It's more like a forest. Yes, you could get lost in here if you didn't know your way around. But you said you were going to meet Art Mason at Mimi's. Mm -hmm. Now, don't tell me Mimi lives here among the trees. There's Mimi. Where? That broken statue of Psyche standing there in the middle of the pool. What? Well, she certainly looks devilish, doesn't she? <laughs> well, that's why Art and I called her Mimi. Oh. We used to meet here in the old days. <laughs> We've hiked through these woods a hundred times. What? And the clerk got word to him. I'm banking that he'll show up. Well, I hope you're right. I've already got the jitters. I never did care for the woods at night. What's that? Bonsoir, monsieur, madame. Holy smoke, a kid. Don't you remember me, monsieur Wilson? I am Pierre, the son of Madame Perrault. Pierre? <laughs> well, I'd never know it. Well, you've certainly grown since I saw you last. Oui. These days in Paris, a fellow gets to be a man very quickly. But I am 12. <laughs> Uh, I beg your pardon. This is uh, Lorelai. Hello, Pierre. Well, forgive me for saying it, but you don't look as if you get enough to eat. I think I have never had enough to eat, mademoiselle. There are thousands like me here in Paris, boys whose fathers and mothers have been killed by the Nazis. They call us the wild boys of the streets. I am the leader of my own gang. Well, have you got your gang with you? They are never very far away from me. Monsieur Mason got word you were here. 
He could not come himself, so he sent me to get oh, you. you. You know where he is? Oh, but of course. My boys and I, we work with him. We have to deliver his underground newspaper, La Liberté. We are working for free France. And you can take us to him tonight? Oh, oui, mademoiselle, at once. You come with me. Just what we're ready to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Quick, Vendor, grab that boy. Yeah, I've got him, excellent. Oh, yeah. sh- Oh, you filthy beast. These wild boys must be controlled, Fräulein. Their bite is poisonous. I trust you haven't forgotten me, Herr Wilson, Captain Heinrich. I'll never forget you. We lost you once tonight, but we won't lose you again. We've trailed you from one place to another, knowing you'd lead us to Mason. Well, that's where you made a great mistake. We don't know where he is. Ah, but the boy knows, and I don't think we'll have much trouble with him. We have methods that make even strong men tell all they know. You can torture me, but I will never tell you. I think you will, Gutterrat. Bring him along, Bender. Get on. You're coming with us, Wilson. You too, Fräulein. Our car is waiting down the road. Stop moving. I'm wet, I'm wet. He's a wild boy. It's the wild boys. There's a mob of them, Excellent. They are spooning us. Kick out the Bender. Fire on them. Drive them back. Quickly, Wilson. Mademoiselle, now is our chance. Follow me. We will steal their car. Yes, they can stop the car. That's a swell idea. Scoundrel, Art Mason. <laughs> well, it's certainly good to see you again. <laughs> Same here, Steve. I never thought our next meeting would be under these conditions. Well, it's quite an elaborate hideout you have down here, Art. Yes, the catacombs under this old cathedral must have been built over 500 years ago. They've hidden many a revolutionary in the past. This isn't the first time France has fought for her freedom, you know. You know, Art, those uh, newsletters you sent to the press created a sensation in Big Town. We've got to have more of them. You'll get them, Steve. One of our workers will contact you regularly. Here's the code you'll use. Thanks, Art. You sure you don't lose it? No, I won't. But first, I've got to get you two out of Paris. Well, I don't see how it can be done. Well, it has been done. It's being done. You know, this is one of the stations on the underground route for smuggling refugees into the unoccupied zone. Well, it's about time you got here, Major. Oh, I'm sorry, Herr Mason. What's the rain? No, come to your line. Best in time. I want you to, uh, to meet uh, two friends of mine, Steve Wilson and Lorelai Kilburn. Let me tell uh, Say, uh, what is this, Art? A German officer in uniform? What the devil is he doing here? <laughs> <laughs> tell him, Major. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Wilson, I'm as much of an American as you are. You see, what? Germany has no monopoly on secret agents. Our men of the United States intelligence get around, too. I can't tell you the Major's real name, but he's just finished an assignment in Berlin and Paris. My job is to help him get out of here, into unoccupied territory. All we needed was a Gestapo card. We've got one now, thanks to you and Pierre. Uh, we're leaving at once, Mr. Wilson. We? Yes, we have a German uniform for you. You'll be my military chauffeur. All you have to do is keep quiet. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. You'll have to be across the border before daybreak. Do you think you can stand another trip tonight, Lorelei? Well, I'm game. No, it won't be fun, exactly, and I can't promise it will succeed. You ready to change, Wilson? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, say, uh, look here, Art. Uh, why can't you come with us? No, Steve, my work is here. I can't leave my wild boys. They need me. I'll get word to you from time to time. Bye, old man. So long, Lorelei. Send my regards to all the boys in Big Town. Slow up, Wilson. Here's the border of unoccupied France, the last station under German military control. Sit tight, both of you. Say nothing unless you have to. Your name, Mario? Reinhardt, third division, en route to Vichy. Here are my papers. Thank you, Herr Major. Say good. Everything is in order, Herr Major. Thank you. Proceed, driver. One moment, please. Uh-huh. We have a description of this car. It was stolen from the Gestapo last night in Paris. Uh-huh. Wait till I see the number. Yes, it's the same. You'll have to come inside until you report this to my captain. Oh, come inside. Nothing. We're late already. Uh, uh, it's my fault, Herr uh, uh, Major. The, the car order for this trip broke down last night, and I found this one abandoned on the street near the Bois de Boulogne. Knowing you had to leave it once, I commandeered it in your name. Oh, you stupid fool. You should have reported this to me. Uh, my apologies to the Gestapo, Sergeant. Tell them I send their car back from Vichy, huh? But I can't let you go on, Major. My orders are very strict. My orders supersede any that you may have received. I'm on the business of our failure. I'm not to be delayed, understand? But, Herr uh, Major, at last... Let me call my captain. Get out of our way or we run you down. Drive on, you idiot. Drive on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Major. Oh, boy. I never 
thought we'd make it that time. Hey, it's a lucky thing for us. There were no commissioned officers out of bed yet. Oh, I'm just about ready to collapse. Well, we're in the unoccupied zone now. Keep going, Wilson. Well, don't worry, I will. Goodbye, Paris. I hope I'll see you again someday. Someday when you're free. Stay tuned in, please. In 30 seconds, we're going to give you a hair-raising highlight from next week's show. Morning, evening, noon, and night. There are dishes to wash and grease to fight. And that's where the new anti-sneeze Rinso is tops. I'm telling you ladies, with those rich go-getter Rinso suds in action, the stubbornest grease-coated platter emerges from the pan with a dazzling sparkle. And Rinso's easy on your hands. It doesn't get them all rough and red. Yes, it's all that and thrifty, too. Costs less than a cent a day to do your dishes the Rinso way. So get new anti-sneeze Rinso tomorrow. And now for the preview of next week's thrilling show, an adventure laid against the romantic background of Tangier in Spanish Morocco. A story of Steve matching wits with a dangerous spy. From the Wilhelmstrasse in Berlin, the news leaks out that Jason, the Nazi's master killer, is on the loose again. It's night in Tangier, a narrow alley between two high walls. Steve and Lorelei hidden in the shadows of a doorway. Got him, Lorelei. Do you think he's still here in the alley? He's got to be. There's no exit at the other end. He's hunting us just as we're hunting him. Now, no matter what happens, I want you to stay right here where you'll be safe. Shh, listen. I can hear someone scraping along the side of the wall. You're right. He's coming this way. Get back. There he goes. Stay where you are, Lorelei. Steve, come back. It may be a trap. Oh, you fool. Don't follow him into that dark room. What did I tell you? There's a snap lock on the door. I can't get it open. Was it Jason? Remember, that's the scene from the middle of the story, not the end. Same time, same station, next Thursday night. The music for tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Leith Stevens. This broadcast was produced under the direction of Crane Wilbur. All the names used in Big Town are fictitious, and any similarity to actual persons and places is purely coincidental. There's nothing so dismal as a foghorn. Unless it's somebody with... Stop B.O. Take a daily bath with the new 1942 Life Boy. New added ingredient, new vanishing scent, same protective lather. From head to toe, it stops B.O. Life Boy. Extra, extra, get your illustrated press. Read why the no rich Arenso gives wider, brighter washes. Extra, try with.